Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at what the best weapons are for every class in Battlefield 1. This is taking into account the Time to Kill update released in January of 2018, which changed damage models, rate of fire, accuracy on many of the weapons, if not most of the weapons in the game. So it's definitely worth taking a revisit on what some of the best weapons are and figuring out which guns are going to suit your playstyle the best. Starting off with the Assault class, this weapon here, the Ribby Rolls, is what I believe to be the most versatile weapon for this class. It got a nice damage upgrade with the TTK 2.0 patch. It's got a fast reload, dis decent magazine size, and it can extend its range fairly far, even further if you deploy the bipod by going prone or mounting it on a windowsill. This weapon used to actually be pretty good before the patch, and now it is considerably better post-patch. However, it isn't one of the faster time to kill weapons in the game. It's faster enough so that if you're on point you can deal with most enemies but if you're going up against some players with higher dps weapons that's where this one's going to start to lack a little bit you might find the magazine capacity a little bit limiting if you're going up against too many opponents in close quarters. That's where I would suggest switching over to the Hellriggle if you're going for that CQB combat with an SMG. This weapon was excellent pre-patch. It's even better in my opinion post-patch. It did suffer an accuracy and recoil nerf, however, so it's going to be a little bit more unruly, making its ranged effectiveness a little bit less than it was before, but you still have 60 rounds in a magazine and a massive damage up grade to just absolutely tear through as many enemies as you can find in close quarters. Now sure, the Automatico does still do more damage per second than this weapon, but it received a massive recoil nerf from the last patch, as did the Machine Pistol. So you could find weapons that are better on taking out a single enemy, but in terms of general versatility and usability in most large-scale battlefield games, the Hellriggle is still an absolute beast and a king among SMGs. Now what about shotguns in close quarter combat? If you're on point, these can be some of the most lethal weapons in the game. You can absolutely decimate multiple enemies before you need to reload. I still feel that the 10A Hunter is the best shotgun in the game. Now, if you're going up against one single opponent, you could argue that the 1900 is an objectively better shotgun because it can shoot faster, but the 1900 still does the exact same damage per shot as the 10A, and the 10A has a lot more rounds to go through before you need to reload, which makes it more ideal for dealing with a larger group of enemies. You can down an entire squad of enemies before needing to reload this weapon. It also has the tightest pellet spread and the highest damage per shot out of any of the pump action shotguns, making it more accurate and dealing more damage than any of the other shotgun options out there. If your goal is to kill as many people as quickly as possible, the 10A Hunter is pretty much the best option out there. Few other shotguns can really compete with this one in close quarter damage potential. Those are my top three picks for the Assault class. Let's move on to the Support class. Now the Support class got some major accuracy nerfs, but also some major damage upgrades, making a lot of their machine guns very difficult to use while standing, uh, but incredibly powerful when prone and bipodded, and much more effective at further distances. My previous favorite support weapon was the BAR Storm. That has not changed. This gun is still an absolute beast. It's one of the most effective support weapons when firing from a standing position in close to medium range combat. It has one of the highest damage outputs of any of the support weapons out there. It's a great running gun support weapon. After the TTK 2.0 patch, it got a damage upgrade so that it does 26.5 maximum damage, taking its five shot kill down to a four shot kill in close quarters, making it even more lethal than before. However, it did receive an accuracy nerf and a recoil nerf. This is going to make it a little less accurate and a little less usable at further ranges, but the damage upgrade in my opinion outweighs this and it's still an absolute beast and a really fun weapon to use. All right, so what if you want to extend the range of the support class? You've been getting absolutely dropped by support snipers out there using their bipodded LMGs to drop you in seconds at further ranges. This is actually a big change up in the general support meta and bipodded gameplay is going to become far more effective. Well, what do you want from a bipodded gun? You're going to want good accuracy, a good optic for seeing your opponents at further ranges, um, and a decent time to kill, but that's less important if you have amazing accuracy. 
Here we have the M1909 Bernay Merci. It's one of the slower firing machine guns in the game, but one of the most accurate machine guns in the game as well. And once it's bipodded, this thing can take on snipers, it can take on medics, it can take on whatever you want at further ranges. It's absolutely laser beam accurate and will drop people in seconds. Now you could argue that you can drop people really quickly with other bipodded machine guns out there. And I would say that is accurate, but they're not gonna be quite as laser beam accurate as this one. And if you have the accuracy to back it up, then this is just without question one of the most enjoyable machine guns to use at those further ranges. Like the BAR and basically every other machine gun in the game, this one also saw a nice damage boost. At the further ranges, you're gonna be at a five shot kill with your opponents, which is very easy to do with a laser beam accurate 30 round magazine or clip, whatever you wanna call this, line of bullets feeding into the side of the gun. Now it is worth mentioning a strong contender for this weapon if you want to sacrifice a little bit of recoil and accuracy for a huge amount of ammunition. The M1917 telescopic variant is amazing while bipodded. It's decent while standing up as well. But uh, that gun you're just never going to have to reload. So if you don't like reloading your 30 round clip on the Benet Merci, then try out the Browning M1917. Now, let's move on to the Medic class. The Medic class to me has become far less of a debate among which guns for which situation and more of a just use the RSC because it is now amazing. Granted, the RSC only has five rounds or six rounds if you leave one in the chamber, so you have to be more accurate with it. It is a higher skill weapon than some of the other medic rifles out there, which may turn some people off from its use, but it's damage per second, it's damage per shot, and the range at which you can two-shot people with this semi-auto rifle is absolutely unbelievable. It's incredibly effective. It's like using a bolt-action sniper rifle that can shoot a lot faster for a two shot kill at medium to medium long range. I believe up to 70 meters, you can still get a two shot kill with this rifle. Like most medic rifles, it's gonna suffer significantly from suppression. So if you're going up against machine gunners, watch out for that suppression as you only have five to six shots to take advantage of. If those become suppressed shots, this gun becomes relatively useless. So just watch out for that at your medium and long range engagements, pick your targets appropriately, and uh, try not to be too aggressive with this gun. You can can get work done aggressively, but it's risky. This isn't a weapon designed to go in and clear out an entire house of enemies. It's a weapon designed to drop people at medium and longer range engagements, and that's where it's gonna excel. Give yourself time to reload, give yourself time to aim down sights. The difference between the optical and factory variant are minimal, so I would suggest just picking whichever weapon you prefer the optics for. If you like having a little red dot optic, go for that. If you like the iron sights, go for that. Personally, I kinda like the factory variant a little bit better. Now, if close quarters is a little bit more your style, the Fedorov Optima is still a totally viable option. This weapon, however, did not see a huge upgrade from the latest patch. It got some accuracy buffs and a little bit of a range buff, but uh, the damage itself didn't get a huge upgrade compared to the rest of the weapons in the game. Um, and this is in line with other medic weapons. The Fedorov already was a four shot kill in close quarters. So it was a very effective weapon. It's still an effective weapon. It just might feel a little bit less so compared to the upgrades that the SMGs and other classes got. But still, if you like the Fedorov, this is another one of the better medic weapons that you can use and it gives you an entirely different play style. I would also say it's worth mentioning that the auto loading extended is a good alternative for the Fedorov Optima if you don't mind a semi-auto weapon that can dish out a massive amount of damage in close quarter combat. And also the auto loading marksman is still decent at range, but I find that some of the five shot rifles are just being kind of replaced by the effectiveness of the RSC right now. So if you really enjoyed those five shot medic rifles that could only get one kill per mag before, they're gonna be just as effective as they were before, a little bit more so in terms of range and accuracy, but the RSC is so damn good now, there's little reason to use them in my opinion. Now, how about the Scout class? How has the TTK 2.0 update changed the Scout class as it's changed all the other classes fairly significantly? Well, they haven't really affected any of the weapons. I thought that they were gonna update some of the sweet spot ranges or something like that based on the patch notes that DICE released, but according to SimThick, it does not appear that any of the sweet spot 
ranges have been changed at all on these rifles. So they're basically as they were before. If you liked the rifle before, you're probably still going to like it now. You have to be aware that support class, medic class, and assault classes are all much more effective now. And that, in a sense, is going to make the scout class a little bit less effective. But if you like sniping before, you're still going to like sniping. It's very effective, very lethal. Um, I had no problem taking out tons and tons of supports. There's so many more bipodded supports now, which makes for very easy sniper targets. If you're a smart sniper and you know how to engage them properly without taking that suppression before you're shot, no problem. My two favorite sniper rifles are still the SMLE Marksman for all around sniping. Good for medium range sniping and a very, very effective sweet spot for that kind of ranges. And then the Gewehr 98 for long distance sniping as it has the fastest muzzle velocity in the game. You have a sniper scope option for that as well. Um, and it's got a pretty good long range sweet spot to boot. So those are my two favorite sniper rifles. I enjoy the heck out of them, still enjoy the heck out of them. And I'd certainly give them a try if you haven't yet. So those are my top weapons for each class in the game. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what your favorite weapons are if you have any different preferences over mine. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.